So I'm just gonna start off with uh, highlighting some of the differences between uh, vCenter and uh, vRealize operations. So here, I'm logged into my vCenter, I'm looking at one of my vSAN clusters. And if I scroll down, I can see my point in time, you know, what my vSAN capacity looks like at this very moment. Okay, I could dive in, I could take a look at the details of it. Um, in 6.7 U3, this is the new UI, uh, we can show a uh, little bit more information, again, very point in time of what's the distribution of my uh, usage. But if I wanna look at uh, maybe a little bit more uh, historic data, I can go into the capacity history and I can go back as far as 30 days and view uh, what my capacity looked like. So here, and, and I wanna point this out because I'm gonna show you the difference in, in VR ops. This is now, okay, this, this is the, the end of the line. We're not gonna show you what this is gonna look like tomorrow or, or a year out. Okay, so I can look at some of the historical stuff, but it's really difficult for me to trend, and, and certainly, um, you know, with, with this graph here, uh, very difficult to trend out. So in comparison, if we look at vRealize operations, okay, we have the vSAN operations overview. And at the top of this, we're gonna show you the entire, you know, really executive level um, 10,000 foot view of your environment across all of your vCenters, across all of your vSAN clusters. Okay, what is your total raw capacity? What's your, re your remaining capacity? Um, then down here, we can dive into the clusters. So this is an area that um, we recommend you take a look at. You know, this is almost a, a, a daily check or weekly check, just really quick on, on the health of your environment. So I've got a cluster here. I'm looking at uh, cluster uh, 01 in my SC2 vCenter. And I can see right away that I've got, okay, cluster storage is starting to run low. Compute looks okay, um, but I'm seeing some disk latency down here. So this is a really good place to just, again, check on, on the health of, of this cluster because now I know, okay, I need to look at something that's going on in my cluster. Okay, so um, just a really good, good starting point. We can also look at things like capacity. So if I wanna look at my vSAN capacity overview, uh, we're gonna look at, let's look at that same cluster, cluster 01. And I can see what my utilization is from a CPU memory disk. I can zoom in. Um, I can say, hey, I'm only concerned with my disk utilization. So I can actually um, turn certain metrics off and just be able to see what my disk utilization looks like. Um, I can see my dedupe ratios, how much I'm saving in, in, uh, by having dedupe enabled. And that one's a really interesting one with respect to that because when we think about something like uh, deduplication and compression, that's inherently an opportunistic space efficiency feature. It's not guaranteed. It's based off of the conditions of the cluster, your workloads, uh, the actual makeup of your physical servers. And so it's, going, it's really going to vary. And for you to be able to see over the course of time, uh, not only what your current state is, but what the typical, whether it be the average uh, or the median might be for your organization uh, can really help you better understand in the future when you need to be able to provision a new cluster, uh, what sort of uh, deduplication and compression ratio that you would be able to expect. Exactly. Um, then in comparison, so uh, to the historical view within vCenter, we're showing you what your capacity looks like now. So in this case, we're looking at disk space because this is our most consumed, most constrained resource for this cluster. So in this chart, we have now on the left side, and we're gonna project it out a year you know, from, from today. So I can see based on uh, past deployments of virtual machines within this cluster, uh, maybe snapshots, just you know, consuming disk, I can start to trend that out and I can see, hey, after you know, uh, a year, I still have, I mean, I don't have a lot of extra capacity, but I haven't crossed that threshold of 100% of capacity utilization yet. Um, then I just wanna show you, we'd me I mentioned uh, we are stretch cluster aware too. So if we're looking at um, uh, deploying things in, in a stretch cluster, I can see uh, my primary site and my secondary site in a side-by-side -side comparison. So my CPU disk utilization, um, I can see all the ESXi hosts that uh, live in either uh, uh, fault domain, and then finally the virtual machines that are running in here, so I can make sure that I have parity maybe uh, between clustered applications, make sure that um, you know, my primaries on, in my primary site, maybe my secondary virtual machine is running in my secondary site. So um, just, you know, again, just being aware of that um, uh, fault domain, it's, it's just another object, it's a vRealize operations object 
that we can perform, uh, you know, collect metrics on and so forth too. So if I want to look at the performance of one domain uh, versus another fault domain, we can it, do that. It, and this, this particular dashboard can also play a role in your design uh, of future stretch clusters and even the existing uh, stretch clusters. So imagine in this scenario and oftentimes what reflects our recommended practices for a stretch cluster is to have symmetry in between each site. So you may have six hosts on one site, six hosts on another site for a 12 node uh, cluster. Now, if in, in the case where you may be running some VMs uh, that uh, are somewhat ephemeral in nature, they're not uh, VMs that you need to be fully protected across sites, and thus you are running just on one site, meaning that it has site affinity, you can see the different resource usage on each site, and then you can tailor the design of that cluster so that you're sitting at a more efficient spot. You may be able to run eight hosts on one side and five hosts on another. It, it just really depends, but that visibility offers that opportunity to be able to make that smart choice. Yeah, and quick show of hands too, who here is running stretch clusters? Ah, very good. Cool. Yeah. Nice. So what I really want to show you is, is the decision-making side. So I just wanted to point out some of the things we can do within VROps, um, to highlight some of the differences here. But what I want to show you is the capacity planning side of things. So again, uh, this is, uh, I'm going to be showing you some things that we're working on for 8.0, um, in particular around workload planning. So I've got a project where I have to deploy so many virtual machines, and I want to make sure that there's enough capacity in my cluster to deploy these VMs. Um, so we've got all these what-if analysis uh, uh, scenarios here. So if I wanted to just add traditional virtual machines or traditional hosts um, to a cluster, I can do that, or I can look at removing them. But on a hyperconverged side, on a, on a vSAN side, um, we can look at adding virtual machines and applying storage policies to those, okay? Because that's obviously going to change how much we're uh, consuming for resources. And I can look at adding um, uh, vSAN nodes to a cluster as well. So uh, in if I look at my, uh, if I run a scenario for adding virtual machines, I'll just give it a name. The scenario is new application. I'm going to deploy in this cluster. And then I can start populating uh, all the information for this VM. So I can say two vCPUs, 16 gigs of RAM, uh, 300 gigs of, of disk space. And if I uh, maybe was trying to deploy virtual machines, maybe I've deployed this uh, application into, uh, into my test uh, environment, I can actually import this information from existing VMs. So we can look at, obviously, the configuration, but then the utilization, how much of those resources those VMs are using. Yes, sir? Um, yeah, that's, that's where I would, I would stack scenarios. So I would create a, a scenario for removing that VM and then adding that VM with a different policy. You could do it that way. Um, then under expected utilization, so this is something that, that we understand can be a little bit tough understanding what we expect the utilization to be. Um, it really kind of comes from working with your application vendor through testing. It's just part of the calculation for capacity, okay? We don't want to assume that you're going to deploy this with uh, uh, two vCPUs and use 100% of them, you know, those resources on day one, right? We know that you're going to want a certain amount of headroom. And in 8.0, we can actually split this out by CPU, memory, and disk. So in this case, maybe I'm not planning to use a lot of CPU and memory, but disk, I'm going to use 60% of uh, my provision, 300 gigs. So I'm going to save that. And then under projected growth, okay, another new feature, I can look at uh, CPU. Maybe I don't expect a whole lot of growth over the next year for CPU and memory, but on disk, again, it's a very storage-heavy uh, application. I expect I'm going to be consuming more and more uh, disk space, 30% over the course of the next year. And for this particular project, I need 30 virtual machines. I want to see if these are going to fit uh, in this cluster. So as far as the storage policy goes, uh, the additional vCN configuration, this is where I would set uh, my, my failures to tolerate, whether it's going to be one or two host failures. Uh, I can set my uh, RAID levels, my, um, so I'm going to say RAID 1 for this one. And then deduplication, I know from looking at that uh, last dashboard that I have a dedupe ratio of one, one and a half to one in this cluster, but 
I don't know about this application. I want to plan for a worst case scenario. So I'm just going to say it's going to be a one to one. Uh, you know, there's, there's uh, not going to be any dedupe on this. And then for the end date, I'm just going to say I want to run these virtual machines. Uh, you know, I, I'm planning to make these permanent in this cluster. So if I run the scenario, it's going to go ahead and it's going to churn through and figure out do I have enough capacity? And in this case, I don't. I have a uh, deficit in uh, how much storage I have. So that's kind of a bummer, but I know I need to deploy these virtual machines in this cluster. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to save the scenario, and then I'm going to go back, and I'm going to look at, okay, if I want to get this project done, how many vSAN nodes do I have to deploy to uh, meet the needs of this application? So I'm going to look at the same cluster. I'm going to uh, select server type that I'm going to add to, <clears throat> that I'm going to add to this. And maybe I know, uh, okay, six terabytes of storage that I need. Maybe one host isn't going to do it. Maybe I need two. And I can look at the cost of what this is you know, going to cost me as well. So within VROps, we have uh, cost drivers. So we ship with uh, uh, cost information uh, right out of the box. But you can also customize it, because we know everybody's going to pay a little bit different for, uh, for hardware. So if I uh, save the scenario, what I can do now is I can stack those two scenarios on top of each other and say, if I want to expand my cluster and add these new application, uh, these new VMs, will I have enough capacity? And with any luck, we're going to have more than enough. So I've taken this just by deploying these virtual machines. We had more than a year's worth of capacity in this cluster, um, but I've taken that down to 168 days. So we're projecting based on uh, our most consumed resource, again, in this case, disk space, that we're going to have 168 days remaining. So if I go down here, I can actually see that information. I can see what my capacity is. In this case, I'm looking at CPU. I can see what my capacity is today. I can see what my consumption is today and then what it's going to look like once I deploy these VMs. I don't have a whole lot of demand on CPU. There's not a lot of growth um, that I'm expecting here. However, disk space is a slightly different story. Okay, again, the gray bar is my current capacity today, and uh, the green line is what I'm going to be deploying to this cluster. So I can see that, okay, 100, uh, uh, 168 days from today is when I cross that line. And down here, um, you know, because 168 days maybe doesn't mean a whole lot to me, so we are calendar aware. So we can say, okay, January 21st is when we're going to run out of resources. So maybe I know come Christmas time I need to ask Santa for more uh, vSAN nodes to you know, basically take this from 168 days to uh, more than a year's worth of capacity.